A bop, bop, bippity bop. A bop, 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 a bippity. I was just dancing. Check one, two, three. Do we have audio? Check one, two on the microphone. My name is Joe Malone. Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. It's Phil here today talking about the six T categories. And this is our 2.0 version. If you're new to the channel, we, sh we make videos about Chinese tea and its culture, including how to brew videos, tea trips, tea tastings, and more. So if you're into tea, please hit that subscribe button and don't forget to click the notification bell beside it so you'll know whenever we post a new video. We also run an online tea boutique, Gen Tea. For those of you who'd like to try some real tasting grade Chinese tea, the link to our shop is right down below in the description box. If you're just getting into tea and you're wondering what are the six types of tea, I suggest you watch this video first, where we explain some basics about the six tea categories. Then come on back to this video. It will make a lot more sense as we're going to talk a bit about some of the often overlooked elements of tea categorization. When talking about tea types, it's well known to many tea lovers that there are six different tea, tea categories. Green tea, white tea, yellow tea, oolong tea, black tea, and dark tea. This categorization is based on the different processes of making tea. In other words, the fundamental differences between black tea and green tea is basically how it's processed. It's not the plant or the origin. This is only one way to categorize tea, however, from the processing angle. We can also take some different angles to categorize tea. From plant type, uh, there are three different types of tea. Tree, small tree, and bush. From the leaf size perspective, teas can be categorized into small leaf tea, usually like your green and your black teas, medium leaf teas, which are your oolongs, and large leaf tea, typically puar and white teas. You can also differentiate teas from their plucking standard, bud teas versus leaf teas, even harvest season, spring tea, summer tea, or autumn tea. Though tea types seem to be color-coded, it doesn't mean that green tea looks green or yellow tea looks yellow. There are two elements we can talk about here. First, the color of the tea. What does this mean exactly? The color of the dried leaves, the liquor color, or the color of the brewed leaves? Secondly, talking about color, I often joke that there are only eight colors in my world. Although this is a joke, it does reflect the common fact that people's color sensitivity is quite different. Besides in the wide range of colors, comparison also plays a part. Take green, for example. If you put it with colors from another spectrum, this one is very green. But if you put it with this set of green colors, you might want to call it more to the yellow. So when we talk about green tea and its associated colors, rather than fixing on bright, vibrant green like this one here, keep in mind that it includes a wide range of greenish colors. Lomjing, Dragonwell, for instance, the authentic color of that tea is actually a yellowish green, not jade green. Other teas' ideal colors might be deep green or light green. There are also color nuances between teas. For example, some yellow teas feature yellow dried leaves, but stale green teas' dried leaves are also going to turn yellow. So how can I be sure that I'm not paying niche yellow tea prices for a stale green tea? For us tea lovers, I think we will have to counterintuitively detach the color-coded naming of tea types from the color of the tea. This means we need to remember that not all green tea has to look green, and don't use the greenness as a criteria for judging green tea. Each tea has its own appraisal standard, which cannot be crisscrossed with other teas. Have you ever encountered a tea labeled as an oolong, but found that it tastes almost like a black tea? or perhaps a white tea that tastes a little bit oolong-y. Maybe you thought, or even been told, that this unique flavor comes from the terroir or the cultivar of the tea. Well, like I always say, most, most, most of what you taste comes from the processing. Processing is a major player in tea quality and taste. The same leaves go through the same general processing steps and don't necessarily generate identical tastes in the end because how each step is executed greatly affects the resulting tea. Let's take white tea as an example. It's considered the least processed tea, 
It's only withered and dried. So it must be the easiest to make, right? Well, the devil's in the details. How do you wither it? How do you dry the leaves? These details can produce totally different tea in both looks and taste. Do you put the leaves under the noonday sun to dry them? Or do you leave them to dry in the shade? Are the leaves dried after 5 hours or does it take 15 hours? These are the questions of mastery. So the next time, if you see a white tea that has reddish brown leaves and almost a black tea-like liquor color, you can be sure that this has nothing to do with its origin, harvest, or cultivar. It's a processing issue. Of course, this doesn't mean you can't love it. Though how the tea is processed is the major deciding factor what the tea type is, it's not the only parameter. The oxidation level in the leaves and the final taste of the tea all play important parts in the tea types. Not to mention, there's always type 7, which simply cannot be fitting, which simply doesn't fit into, into just means it doesn't fit in one of the six categories. This actually brings us to the biggest misunderstanding of tea categories. The six tea types means there's six way of processing tea, meaning teas in the same category are processed the same. Capital wrong. This notion is often facilitated by the tea processing flowcharts, which really make us feel like that there are three steps to making green tea, with clear before and after, in this order, this is how we make green tea. These steps are actually highly abstracted, and that's not true at all. There are many versions of how these steps are actually executed. Some might argue that there are only two steps, or maybe four steps in making a green tea. It doesn't really matter much though, in my opinion because every green tea is processed differently. Handmade Lom Jin or Bilo Chun, they complete all the steps in one wok firing. That makes it look like it's a one-step green tea. But a machine-made version of those exact same teas will actually deconstruct the process into several steps. Kill green and shaping might be two different steps. Some teas like Du Yun Mao Jian or Meng Ding Gan Lu do a kill green, then a shaping, then they come back to the kill green again and they repeat it a few times. Even oolong teas, the shaking step usually looks more like shake, rest, and repeat a few times. But how to shake? When to stop shaking? And how long do we rest the leaves in between those different shakes? These are all different from place to place. Things are always evolving and changing. There have been many new steps and techniques that are used in tea making, and people are always exploring more tasting elements in tea. We will undoubtedly be seeing new tea types that are made with revolutionary new methods, rendering revolutionary new tasting profiles. But before that, let's just enjoy a cup of well-made tea. My intention in making this video is to point out some examples and highlight that when we talk about tea, we tend to oversimplify and use a few tags to define or decide. However, Mingtian is not the gold standard of green tea. Banjang doesn't equal the best puar in the world, and the six tea types have more meaning than simply process. Like any other subject, the more you know about tea, the more questions are revealed. In the end, we're all students in the journey of tea. I hope one day we can revisit the paper by Professor Chen Chuan, who originated this way of categorizing tea during our Sunday tea book sessions. Well, that wraps up today's video. Please give us a thumbs up if you found this helpful and share this video and our channel with your fellow tea lovers. If you're interested in knowing when we post a new video, click that subscribe and notification bell. And until next time, keep steeping. Perfect.